Hello, in this demonstration, uh, I'll show you how to read from an Excel workbook. Uh, to do so in Centerprise, uh, in the designer, uh, navigate to the sources section, open up and click on the Excel workbook source and drag and drop onto the designer. Uh, this will give you the visual representation of an Excel workbook source reader. To configure the reader, uh, right click and select properties. Uh, this will bring open the properties dialog. Uh, and the first thing you're going to want to do is fill out the file path. Click on the open file icon, which will uh, allow you to select the file. In this case, I'm going to select this Excel workbook source. Um, and then the first option, alternatively, you can type in this thing as well. The first option you have is to whether or not the file contains a header or not. So in this example, you can see where my data does actually not contain a file. If I leave the default option checked and click Next to rebuild my layout in this case, uh, I'll end up with a bunch of uh, junk data for column information because it's actually considering this to be the first column. To correct this, uncheck the File Contains Header option and rebuild the layout. And this will give you a default naming for all of the columns that you have, uh, A through uh, whatever. In this case, I have nine columns. Uh, you can also change the names of these columns or leave them as defaulted. The next option is what the worksheet uh, you want to read from. So in this Excel workbook here on the right, you can see that my workbook has several uh, Excel sheets. Uh, if you do not specify the worksheet, it'll assume that you mean the very first worksheet encountered in the workbook. To select a different sheet, such as this one in my example, uh, you'll want to click on the drop-down and select uh, the name of the sheet from the drop-down. Uh, so in this case, um, I will also want to check the file contains a header, because in this case my file does contain a header. Uh, also notice that the data does not start on the very first row in this case. Uh, it actually starts on the fifth row due to some uh, label that I have in the first couple of rows. To handle this scenario, you'll want to type in the start address, in this case A5, to tell Centerprise where to start reading data from. Uh, so now I'll click on the layout, say uh, next, and rebuild the layout. And this will take me to the layout screen where it inferred the column names that I wanted based on the, uh, the column row, in this case. Uh, so this is almost right uh, I mean, in the fact that I do have column names and they look pretty close, but notice that in this case the second column, loan ID, uh, it's missing the ID part and that's because the ID is actually on the next row. So in, ca in these cases where your header spans multiple rows, you'll want to use the header spans over and number of rows option. So by clicking next, rebuilding the layout, again it's going to read the layout from the sheet. Uh, you'll see that I do have the correct loan underscore ID, and it'll actually start reading data below the header, in this case, correctly. The other options uh, are basically for to tell Centerprise what happens when uh, data has changed, uh, or actually the format has changed of your, from the time you originally built uh, this layout specification. So, for example, uh, I'm going to choose the uh, this, this option here, uh, in this case, the data doesn't start on the, here's when we get to open the corresponding worksheet. In this case, the data starts on the very first row, so I'll clear out the start address. And the header only spans one row. So clicking on Next, I'm going to rebuild the layout. And then click OK. Doing so will, uh, will give me the tree, which is basically a representation of the column data in the Excel workbook. If I preview the data at this point, You'll see that open this up. You'll see that it's reading the uh, data correctly, and that I have column A, B, C, and D, and then the data underneath. So you might have an you might run into examples where the, the 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 columns remain the same, but the header and the the header row uh, has changed. So in the, my original example, I have column A, column B, column C. In this example, I have A, B, C, and D, but other than that, the sheet remains the same. So to be able to handle uh, such a change, uh, you'll want to check the column headers uh, may be different or use layout column order to identify the column. Doing so will allow me to, uh, let me change the sheet now to this one. Order example, click OK. I'm going to 
to say don't rebuild the layout uh, just to illustrate this fact so I still have the it's still looking for column A, B, and C but it's going to ignore the headers so if I preview data in this case you can see that it still was able to read the data correctly even though the headers were, uh, were me messed up here so the other example now is if the exact opposite where if you have the header names are exactly the same but now the data is in different columns uh, like in, let's say for example a column got inserted or uh, you re uh, removed an end of the column or something or, or you had an ex extra data in the column to handle to handle this we want to use the uh, column order in file may be different or use the headers to identify the column uh, in this case I'll click I'll change the worksheet now to, for, to this example headers example say okay not to rebuild the layout uh, so I still have this uh, so now if I preview the data you'll see that again it's able to read the data correctly and that's because I had the option of, of reading uh, based on the header names uh, so the last option uh, treat empty string as null value is just basically if you have a uh, an empty data uh, data call, uh, data cell in Excel in Excel, this will basically enable you to use uh, null values or basically uh, nulls in uh, expressions to test for null. Uh, to basically, if you had an if is null, you'll be able to use that. If you do not check this, this will show up just as basically empty text or the empty string value, and it will not pass the is null option. Uh, so that's basically it for the Excel workbook source example. I hope uh, this was informative. Thank you very much.